Hi everyone, in this episode I would like to show you how to delete sliding in your animation. If you've animated your creature or your character on a path, you might have the problem with legs sliding, especially when the character makes a turns, or maybe you would like to just clean up your animation in the polishing stage, you will need this technique. So let's get started. So the last time we successfully managed to attach our loop animation to the spline. So right now our tiger is no longer staying in one place. He is walking forward in a path. Okay, and right now he's turning. We've tried to, of course, delete as much sliding as possible just through adding correct speed that fits to his leg motion. So right now he is not sliding too much, but once he enters the turn, you might notice that yes, feet unfortunately are sliding, so it's gonna be a problem later on. So of course we could, for example, use animation layer for that reason and just counter animate, but it won't give you the cleanest results because graph editor won't understand that the same way. Basically right now, his paws, his legs are moving accordingly to this controller. So from my perspective, these legs are actually staying in the same space. We just moved his main controller accordingly to the workspace of Maya. So we want to switch that and we want to just get rid of the main controller and create a workspace animation for our legs. So how to do that? In studio environment, you might have plugins for that. Even in Animbot, you, you have the possibility to do that. But keep in mind, you might get into a situation when you just need to do things quickly and you won't have any ability to actually purchase some plugins. So that's why it's important to learn these manual solutions and really feel comfortable with them. All right, so let's get started. Right now, we will just create several locators for our pulse, but not only for them, because we need to create for each controller, which is I key, which is like a translating. So in that case, we need to create them for four paws, four legs, chest, hips, and also knees, you know, because right now these are also translating, they're not rotating. All right, so let's create first locator, create locator, let's name them correctly so we won't get lost in the process. So this one will be our um, left front ball. Let's copy this one. Right front ball. Right back ball. And also for the knees. So right now, chest and hips are left. So let's copy this. Okay, so we finished and right now we will need to connect them to our animation. So we basically are going to save animation to the locators. So they will have the data. Okay, so first, all parent, child, and then constraint. Uncheck this and 
right now Locator is following. Great. Okay, so we are left with Denise, so make sure when you are going to connect them, click on strain, just to uncheck the rotation because Denise has only translation channels available. Okay, so let's make a test and every controller should follow the body. Yes, exactly. Okay, so we can right now select every controller and we can bake the animation on the controller. So basically by baking, you are saving the animation on these controllers. Right, so as you can see, our locators finally have animation accordingly to the word space. So it's constantly moving forward here. Okay, so the movement is finally represented in graph editor. And what we need to do right now is just to do reverse operation. So we need to kill the constraints and then connect our controllers to the locators. So we are actually like loading the movement back to the controllers. But this movement will be different a little bit because, I mean, movement itself is the same, but the understanding of it by Maya is different because it's a, in word space, it's not moving accordingly to the main controller. Right, so, we killed the constraints. If you select some locator, you can press F and then you will find it in Outliner. And then by you know clicking this plus, you will find the constraint. Okay, so yeah, let's do the same, the same thing. So this is the left pole. Just remember to select first parent, in this case locator, then pole and constraint and let's make sure to maintain offset and both rotation and translation voila works So it's up to you if you want to use main controller here to control animation forward like this or if you just want to animate the movement forward by moving simultaneously hips and chest. Of course it's easier by the main controller, you know, because you have the control on the entire character uh, but at the same time you are lacking separation. Hips and chest might work sometimes independently 
so sometimes it will be easier to have just uh, full motion on them separately but maybe in some situations you will just see some stretching and shrinking of the belly area okay so i will do that just to make things uh, easier so Turn off the rotation. All right, so right now our model should not be affected by the main controller. As you can see, we moved the main controller and our model is still in the same place. That means that we no longer need this controller. We can actually go back and just, you know, uh, delete the animation from this locator. Just make him go back to the uh, basic state. So you can just kill this animation and our tiger is still moving. So of course the last step would be the baking our controllers and just you know pressing each of them but sometimes you can also uh, just do editing on the locators Currently, our locators yeah, are still affecting the controllers because we just need to go here on the outliner and kill the constraints. So for example, here, locator is not moving, but the pole is following the motion. So we need to right now go to each controller, press F, not locator. Press F and just under this cross, you're deleting the constraint. And the best thing is that right now you can just go to the pole and you can see that the motion looks differently. And uh, curves are representing the current movement correctly. So we can go and actually, you know, finalize, clean up this something so for example this one you know or maybe we can for example once he is entering the turn for this pole you can see that the pole is sliding on the x-axis i think it's this one and this is represented you know in graph editor so once there is a contact so here in this post if you want to just get rid of the sliding then we can do it really quickly we can cut this maybe fix this a little bit and we can maybe go and just edit the last frame so let's take a look so once it's on the ground There is no no translation maybe something we might take a look on this yes and we can still see some small movement if you have still some movement then it might be the rotation so if we fix that but we don't don't want to you know kill everything. Yeah, so right now it's perfectly aligned with the ground. So we actually have to do that every time when the character stays on the ground. 
All right, thanks for watching. Hope you like this video and see you in another episode. Bye. Thank <music> you.